um, boat. Hal uh, runs the Adirondack Cruise and Charter Company, which is right here on Saratoga Lake. And he grew up on Lake George um, in, in, in Bolton Landing um, throughout the summers, always out in, the, out in the ships. His family ran the Dutch Apple Cruises um, down at Albany, so he was always on um, large boats and really began, had a love for the sea and, um, and inland waterways. He's a licensed master captain engi and engineer by the state of New York and he captains boats on Lake George and also his boats here on Saratoga Lake. Um, I know he'll tell you more about the company too, um, and I know it's something that if you've never been on the, one of his cruises, it's a, it's a lot of fun, I've done it myself. And with that, I'd like to introduce um, Captain Hal Raven. All right, good evening. I was just about ready to say welcome aboard the General Schuyler, but uh, welcome to the Canfield Casino this evening. A little wet and soggy out there, so glad to see everybody uh, made it out tonight. Got a good crowd. Excited to see that. But uh, very excited to be here. It's kind of a unique story how we ended up here uh, bringing the boats back to Saratoga Lake and doing this. We started this, uh, basically this venture in around 2016. We were looking at, um, my wife and I were looking at uh, starting our own boat. Captain the boats up on Lake George. Grew up on Lake George. And, uh, well, first of all, my son Jack here. It's my first mate. He'll tell you some fun things this evening, but uh, Jack is always out there on the boats with me. We have a good time together, and uh, he's growing up in the boating tradition. But I grew up in Lake George as a kid, being on boats all the time, Fulton Landing. My uncle, uh, Bill Siebert, had the Dutch Apple, built by Scarano Brothers, one of the big boats to uh, kind of return to the Hudson River doing tours and things like that, telling folks about the history, getting them out on the river, showing them uh, the history of the river. So I grew up in the pilot house, running around the decks with my cousins, having a good old time, and that kind of always stayed with me. As I got older, I loved being on Lake George. I always watched the uh, big ship sailing by and kind of just wanted to be back in the pilot house. So I got my uh, master's captain's license and uh, still captain the uh, Horicon and the Adirondack. Occasionally, when I have a little bit of spare time, my wife says I have way too many hobbies. But uh, it's a passion. So we decided we kind of wanted to do our own thing. We started a pontoon boat, and we were originally going to be up on Lake George, and then we made some trips to the museum down here, and I was looking at Saratoga Lake and considering some different options. And in that process, we saw all these great boats that were kind of out here on Saratoga Lake, all the history that was here, the history of the casinos, the lake itself, the, uh, the railroads, and all this type of stuff. And there was so much rich, rich history right here in Saratoga Springs, and a lot of people didn't know about it. I was running into people all the time and said, oh, we, we didn't know there was a lake right down the street. And it was amazing. People lived there their whole life and had never been on Saratoga Lake. And at first people said we were crazy. They said, why would you want to put a boat on Saratoga Lake? It'll take about two minutes to go across. Well, that's true, but at our modest speed of about seven miles an hour, we turned that into an hour and a half. <laughs> but there is, there's so much to this area. You know, Saratoga Lake, is this great gem that's hidden in our backyard. It's right down the street, minutes from town. Most people don't know it. It was a very private lake for many, many years. And unless you had a boat or own property there, most people never went on the lake. Or if they, they did, they saw the lake from places like Cateros Park or from the rafters and things of you know that nature, some of the lake houses back in the day. Now, Saratoga Lake was very, very popular early on, late 1800s, early 1900s. You know, people came here to the lake for the health, the history, the horses, all the things that came to Saratoga today, they came back then. Problem was this transportation wasn't very good. You couldn't just call an Uber. You couldn't just you know drive to the lake, go to the beach. You had to rely on things like the railroad, the steamboat, the trolley connections. And everything that happened here in Saratoga Springs had a direct relationship with the lake. People stayed at the lake, they went to the lake, they went to the lake to spend their money, to relax, to get outside of city life and enjoy some of the great things that happened. So when this all uh, started, we started the boats. The boat did very well, our pontoon boat. The next year, 20, uh, over the winter, 2017, we were looking for a larger boat. But we knew that we wanted to find the right thing. We wanted to find something that was traditional to the area, something that had the history of the old steamboat, something that had the classic look, and a way to get more people out there to, to tell them this great, rich history and uh, we eventually found the boat that we have now known as the General Schuyler. It's a 50-foot fantail launch that we sail out there. It's a replica of the uh, boats that were in this area in the early 1900s. 
But what that all fits into this is that in the process of doing the research and finding what we wanted to ha have built or sail on the lake, there was very little information on the steamboats and the things that were out here on Saratoga Lake back in the day. We found a few pictures here in the bolster collection and a few things here and there. But in general, there was very little information. There was a lot of great pictures in Saratoga Springs and pl pictures of places all over, but not many newspaper clippings or things like that. So over the winter, when we weren't boating, I started to research it more and more, and the more I researched it, the more fascinating it became. So this evening, I'm going to show you some, uh, some slides and some photos, some news clippings, some different things about some of the boats and uh, the railroad and some of the uh, hotels and well-known things that were around Saratoga Lake. And uh, if you have anything you'd like to add, feel free to shout out. We'll do some questions at the end, but I hope you enjoy it. So Saratoga Lake actually had many, many steamboats. Back in the day, the steamboat was the means of transportation to get around. You didn't have any real roads that went around Saratoga Lake. 9P wasn't built. Transportation was limited. There were a number of beautiful hotels and lake houses around the lake. But you needed to get to them one way or the other, and that was generally by the steamboat. Now, the steamboats would make trolley connections up at the Cateros Park or a railroad connection at the very north end, right where Lake Local is today. If you know where the 9P bridge is, that was the railroad connection back in the day. And at first, I only thought there was a few steamboats. It turned out there was quite a few. There was at least a dozen, maybe more, not including some of the smaller private ones that weren't very well documented. There were boats such as the Idlewild, the Silver Moon, the Katy, the Needle Eye, the James Breslin, the R.B. Coleman, the Interlaken, the uh, Ermine, the Alice, the Nellie C. Price, the Annex, and the Luna. Those are just some of the ones that we found actual documentation on. And the more I researched it, I started to kind of wonder where did all these boats go to. Most of the large boats on Lake George, like the Ticonderoga, the Sagamore, any of those, there was a lot of pictures of the boats. They were gorgeous boats. They were beautiful ships. And when something happened, or they were cut up or scrapped, or there was a fire, it was usually very well documented. There were photos of the fires, or photos of the boats being taken apart, or documentation on it. Down here, Saratoga Lake, there was very little information. I searched newspaper clippings, archives, the history museums, the local, uh, the local town historians. Nobody seemed to know. It seemed like it was a piece of the hit local history of Saratoga that was completely missing from the storybook. Now, quite often when these steamers would become old and not of use anymore, they would just simply drag them out on the lake, drill a hole in them, let them sink to the bottom, or they'd burn them to the water line. So quite often, many of the smaller steamers did end up on the bottom. Now, they also just sometimes just burnt. Fires were very common with the steamboats. They were usually coal-powered or wood-fired uh, wood for their boilers. It wasn't uncommon for sparks to come out of the fire door or the, to the boats to catch an ember in the canopy or something. Um, especially overnight in catch fire. Many of these boats did catch fire. They were usually rebuilt. But quite often, if it was a total loss, they would insurance claim it. But usually the hardware, such as the uh, boilers, propellers, the bronze fittings, and all that type of stuff, were re reused. Many of the boilers would quite often end up in another steamboat. Now, one of the first documented steamboats is the R.B. Coleman. It was built in 1845. And it was captained by a gentleman by the name of uh, P.M. Bromley. It was built up at Stafford's Bridge. You got to remember, at this time in history, Fish Creek was completely wide open. You didn't have 9P Bridge or the railroad trestle crossing at any time. So for those of you not familiar with Saratoga Lake, the lake itself is the main body of the lake. It's about uh, five miles long, two miles wide, 95 feet deep at the deepest part, and about 35 feet average depth. At the north end of the lake, the water all kind of flows to the north, northeast and goes out a creek known as the Fish Creek. That Fish Creek extends all the way up to Schuylerville, paralleling Route 29, where it drains at the hydroelectric dam, eventually to the Hudson River, flowing south of the Atlantic. So uh, Stafford's Bridge, if you guys know where the kayak shack is in Harvest and Hearth, that's up there. That was uh, basically where the steamer was built. It was built up there, brought down the creek, and then served for uh, quite a few years on the lake. This is, we believe, to be the, one of the only uh, basically, drawing type photos of the R.B. Coleman. She was a side wheel paddle boat, very tall stack, but uh, not many photos exist. But we believe that to be the picture of the R.B. Coleman. Very early steamer, she was probably wood fired. And other than that, nothing, there's no documentation of where it went, 
anything like that. So it either probably got cut up, used to build cabins and houses or things like that, disassembled, or burned or sunk. Saratoga Lake, unlike Lake George, has never had a side scan sonar test of it. Lake George has been side scan sonar tested. And any of the wrecks that are on the bottom are basically sonar hits that have either been dove or are marked at least. There's many, many boats that are uh, wrecked up there that are very well documented. Saratoga Lake has not had that ever happen. So we don't really know what's on the bottom. It's a very warm lake. Oxygen content's fairly high. If there were any wrecks out of there, they probably are pretty well decomposed. But there's a good chance that there could be some, uh, some certainly surviving timbers or parts of any of the old steamboat wrecks if they are on the lake. I personally believe that there are some of them or at least pieces of them still out there. It is said that one of, there's a very large steam boiler in the deep water just off of uh, Point Breeze Marina, right there in the channel by the 9P Bridge. There's about a 20-foot steam boiler that's laying out there in the middle of the channel. And uh, I do know a gentleman that retrieved a very large anchor from that channel way back in the day, in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. So I'm sure there's a number of things at the bottom. Now there was also a very large boat called the Silver Moon. Now we talk about a very small lake, five miles long, not very big. You would think, what were all these big boats doing on it? You think of big boats, you think of Lake George, you think of Black Duke St. Sacrament, the Mohegan, the, uh, the older steamboats, the Ticonderoga, the Sagamore, many of those. The funny part is Saratoga Lake had boats just as big. I mean, we're talking 150 feet or longer, you know, three decks. And I did find this article, it talks about Moon's Lake House, and it talks about the, uh, the owner. And uh, there's a little section here, and it says, the, fi the, the finest and fastest steam yacht of her size in the world, the Silver Moon, formerly the Addie Smith, Henry S. Moon, commander, having been overhauled and refitted throughout, making her better and more attractive than ever, will leave her dock adjoining the hotel, 10 a.m., or on the arrival of the omnibus, affording passengers plenty of time to enjoy a trip up the lake and back by 12 o'clock. In season to return by same conveyance, fare one dollar. After, afternoons and evenings, a steamer can be chartered at any time for private parties. A trip by moonlight on the lake cannot be surpassed in this fascinating and picturesque scenery. CB Moon. Now this uh, clipping was from 1872, so it puts that steamboat somewhere in the time frame of uh, 1872, but quite a large steamer. There is one photo that we have that we may believe that it be, may be the silver moon that we'll get to. But uh, it's fascinating. It talks about some of the new boats having joined the fleet and things like that. So there were a number of boats out there, certainly in uh, 19, or 1872, and the silver moon probably being the largest of the time. Now I found this neat little clipping. It was... Uh, it says it was taken in the 1890s. See a lot of smaller steamboats like this. These were like private, private yachts or private launches. They were also known as hotel steamers. They were easily built over the winter on shore, usually cedar strip wood, pine, uh, oak, mahogany, whatever they get their hands on. Take a steam boiler, plop it in the center, put a canvas canopy on it, and uh, they would get underway. Now, they're not very well documented, but uh, distinguishing features that we would look for in steamboats and pictures is ornamental pieces. Every owner of a steamboat liked to decorate it with their own types of things. Big hand-carved wooden eagles were very popular, as well as steam whistles. Every steamboat captain had his own whistle, and that was kind of important. You would uh, hear the toot of the whistle, each one having its own tune. You would always know which steamboat it was coming up the lake. And that was important as they announced their arrival to the docks and things like that. We're just saying hello to people. We kind of have our own tradition on Saratoga Lake with our whistle. Has anyone ever been on our boat with us? So you know about Dorothy's house? All right. I'll tell you about it a little bit more than a second. But anyway, this, uh, this, this talks about the, uh, the Katie, the, the needle gun, James Breslin, more to Saratoga Lake. This particular one has a large uh, hand-carved wooden eagle here. And um, small boat in the back, not very well seen. Looks like the pilot house is up in front, but um, most of these boats have some distinguishing features. But other than that, very few pictures exist of these. The ones that are out, out there are very grainy and hard to distinguish. Now this was a unique postcard I just found a few weeks ago. 
It was up in Lake George in, a, in Bolton Landing in an antique store. I'd never seen this one before. But this is uh, probably the, the Steamer Luna or the, uh, the Needle Gun, possibly the KD White right here in one of these spots. This dock right here is uh, the Moon's Lake House dock. Uh, you extended right off the property from Moon's Lake House. Back here, right here, this would have been the steamboat landing, a very large wooden pier right here, steamboat landing. This would be where Lake Local is today. So if you go to Lake Local and you walk out on one of the docks, if you look down in the water, you can see actually large wooden timbers that extend straight down. Those timbers are parts of these, uh, this wooden pier right here. This wooden pier would have been where the Lady of the Lake, the steamboat Alice, and many of the other larger steamers would uh, stop here to pick up and discharge passengers, making a direct connection with the railroad. Now you can barely see it in the picture here, but these wooden timbers right here is the railroad trestle crossing Fish Creek. And this is probably the Steamboat Alice right here, just leaving the uh, dock. This is a unique picture that comes up quite often. A picture of a steamboat here with a very unique type shaped stack. It's unnamed, but uh, it does appear in a number of Saratoga Lake pictures. This would have been right off the Moon's Lake House dock. This would be Point Breeze over here in the distance and the, uh, the small point as you exit the, the channel heading out to the main part of Saratoga Lake. Rowboats were very popular, sailboats were very popular. A lot of folks would come out and uh, row and enjoy the afternoon out there. And uh, very popular for, for fishing. Saratoga Lake has an extremely good fish population today and even back in the day. It said that the natives fished here uh, for food and that during the uh, Revolutionary War, British and American encampments came to Saratoga Lake to fish for its uh, wide varieties of fish, warm water fish, such as largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, pike, pickerel, walleye, uh, perch, and various other pan fish. Now this picture is really kind of neat. If you were at Carson's Woodside Tavern standing up on the hill, that's probably where these folks are standing right here. This picture was down at the Schenectady Museum, but it's fascinating. That's Snake Hill. Look at the size of the steamboat going across the front of Snake Hill. It's enormous. Very, it's undocumented, doesn't talk anything about it. It's a good possibility that this, this boat is the Silver Moon or the Lady of the Lake. It doesn't appear to be the Lady of the Lake, but there's a good chance that it could be the Silver Moon. But I mean, it's just enormous. You talk about Five Mile Lake and this enormous boat that's probably, that's well over 150 feet long and at least three decks high. We're talking capacity, probably 1,200, 1,500 people. That's more than the Lac du St. Sacrament on Lake George. So where did they go? You had a hotel that could maybe hold 60 people at the White Sulphur Springs and Riley's. This was the floating nightlife. People came out here to drink, gamble, do all the things that you couldn't do downtown anymore and that were becoming frowned upon, you could do out here on basically this floating casino. With the nightlife, it was quite the party. You also have to remember that steamboats were a great way to get away from the hot summer days. This was the natural air conditioning. You put the boat into the wind and you're cruising along at 10, 12, 13 knots, you get quite a breeze. People had hot, stuffy homes, poorly insulated, it was nothing better than doing a hot summer day or evening to go out on a steamboat ride, drink your lemonade, have some whiskey, a cigar, you know, enjoy the social atmosphere. It's quite a popular thing. Now, Moon's Lake House, one of the very popular uh, lake houses on Saratoga Lake, right up the north end of the lake. Um, it was right by Frank Leslie's Inner Lake Inn and kind of close to. Uh, Lake local restaurant that's up there today. It's a large uh, blue place that's up there. It was the old Moon's Lake House Bar and Tavern for many years. Today it's a private residence and they rent out the, uh, the old tavern. It's a very popular place. This article here talks about the steamer Luna, the Nellie Price and the Nellie Price. They were two of the steamers that belonged to Moon's Lake House that they had rented out or leased at various times. Or they had just operated from the lake house to bring guests from the uh, omnibus line and the uh, stagecoach from Saratoga Springs out onto the lake, making direct connections with the other hotels, Riley, they could go down to Riley's, they go down to White Sulphur Springs, they can go to Cateros, make all kinds of great connections. Now Moon's Lake House was uh, very popular, built by a gentleman by the name of Carrie Moon in 1893. It became very well known for its fishing game dinners. 
They would catch the fish directly from Saratoga Lake, serve them right there in the kitchen. A lot of, a lot of folks came for these uh, game suppers and things, fresh venison, fresh duck. There was a uh, cook by the name of there, by, by the name of George Speck. You, know, you also hear the name George Crumb. It's kind of interesting, that was a nickname given to him by the Vanderbelts. Commodore Vanderbilt was there one day having some dinner. He loved to go to uh, Moon's for dinner. He liked his duck cooked a particular way. Mr. Uh, George Speck wasn't really sure how to do that, but he tried his best. The Commodore really enjoyed it. But he would always forget the guy's name every time he came. He would forget his name and he'd, he would say, hey, Crumb. And it kind of stuck with him. It turns out that he liked, he said that uh, Crumb is bigger than Speck. So he, he kept the name Crumb. So he was known by George for many, many years. Being that the hotel had a steamboat connection, made it popular, it was a great way for guests to connect with the railroad and to get to various spots on the lake. One of the other fascinating things, it also had a toboggan run. If you know where to look, you can see the foundations out there on the property. This wooden, this wooden ramp of death would just kind of launch down the hill and out onto the lake. When the lake was all frozen, they would spray it with water. You would go whipping down the toboggan, it would shoot you halfway out into the harbor, and you would walk back up the hill and do it again. So toboggan runs were very, very popular. Now the hotel didn't do very well. It burnt down in 1893, shortly after they built it. It burnt down again in 1908, and then it burnt down one more time in 1926. So like the steamboats, everything kind of eventually caught fire at some point. So there's a picture of uh, George Speck, or George Crum, as he was known by Commodore Vanderbilt. Built in, he was born in 1824. And he worked as a hunter, a guide, and a cook. He was very well known for his uh, guide services and being able to take folks out to uh, catch uh, fresh fish. His fish dinners were to die for, they said. He became a very, uh, very renowned American chef. He later owned his uh, own restaurant around here known as Crumbs. He also had a famous invention that occurred by accident when, it was at, uh, when he was at Moon's Lake House. Jack, you want to tell us? This is Jack's favorite part of the tour when we go by moons. So one, one day, um, the Vanderbilts were at Moon's Lake House, and they had a fish dinner with dog, soggy, thickly sliced potatoes. And they weren't very happy, so they sent them back to the kitchen. And the cook, George Crumb, wasn't very happy, so we cut them thin, put them in hot oil, um, put salt in them, sent them back, and that was one of the potato chip. Oh boy. So they say the uh, potato chip was invented or accidentally stumbled upon in uh, Mr. Crumb's kitchen, and that's one of the stories, but it did quite well. It was uh, capitalized on by the owner, uh, Carrie Moon. He advertised it very heavily. It was an e excellent way to promote his establishment. Now this is a picture from uh, up higher on Moon's Lake House looking down. You can see Snake Hill in the background. Toboggan Run was uh, somewhere off the right here going down. But this is the steamboat dock right, right off of Moon's. And that's the uh, steamboat uh, Luna and probably the uh, Nellie Price right here off the Moon's Lake House dock. Right over on this side would be um, Lake Local Restaurant and the Railroad Trestle crossing the Fish Creek. So as we progress through the years, the railroad arrives. This is a very, very big deal for Saratoga Springs. The Delaware and Hudson was, uh, had arrived earlier right into the main part of Saratoga Springs, very well-known railroad. But the Boston and Maine was uh, the up and growing railroad at that time known as the Fitchburg. The Fitchburg Railroad had quite a large task at hand as they had just got done chiseling through five miles of solid granite through the Berkshires through a little tunnel known as the Hoosick Tunnel. Nobody ever thought they would make it through. They did make it through. They actually tunneled through the mountain through two separate sides, meeting in the center, just a few feet off from each other. The chief engineer actually was so convinced that he had uh, messed up the calculations and done it wrong that he had committed suicide a couple of days previous to them meeting directly in the middle. When they built the French tunnels using GPS and all that type of stuff, they were off by feet. This was all done with survey lines, in various points and uh, mathematical calculations. 
Now, as the railroad boom is going on, these railroads were all raising the build lines into new towns, making connections. The uh, Fitchburg Railroad hoped to arrive in Saratoga Springs and then uh, continue its line further. Uh, that never really happened. Uh, the line that uh, arrived in Saratoga was a spinoff known as the Saratoga and Schuylerville. But they, uh, they built this line and they, they called it the Saratoga Lake Railroad at the time. Now this line basically came out of Mechanicville, New York. It came up, winding its way up around the east side of the lake. It crossed right where the 9P bridge is there across the Fish Creek. It goes along the Saratoga Rowing Association by the shore right along the creek and then went up to a switch known as the Dyer Switch. At the Dyer Switch, if you went to the left, you would end up in downtown Saratoga Springs right by the armory. If you uh, drive basically down High Rock Road and get to the armory, that was the old uh, engine terminal and the terminus of the railroad. Anybody familiar with the, the EBI Beverage Center, the bike trail that runs right through town? That building is one of the few surviving buildings. That is the actually old original uh, engine house for the uh, Fitchburg Railroad. There's some black and white pictures that exist of the uh, steam locomotives parked inside the Beverage Center. There's a few stations that also exist. The Cedar Bluff Station on the east side of Saratoga Lake is kind of hidden in the woods. It's a private home today but that is still there. And a couple of the large bridge piers, as well as the uh, wooden timbers on the Fish Creek. If you look down from the 9P bridge, you'll see some wooden timbers in the lake. That is the, the remains of the original trestle crossing the Fish Creek built by the Fitchburg Railroad. They also built one of the largest steamers to ever sail Saratoga Lake. 1880, they started construction on it. It was finished in 1881. Come on. This picture of the uh, Saratoga Lake, Saratoga and Schuylerville map coming up from Mechanicville right into Saratoga Springs. And then if you went to the right, it terminated at Schuylerville. So this is a picture of the uh, Saratoga Lake Railroad right on Fish Creek. That's the wooden timber trestle. They sunk these wooden pilings directly into the lake with pile drivers, built the trestle across the top of it. It crossed all the way across the, the lake. This is one of the steam locomotives parked out here, and you'll see a large number of people and things like that. If you look real closely at the magnifying glass, you'll actually see a gentleman up here holding a very large hose. They're actually pumping water from the lake into the steam tender. That water was the source of uh, water for the uh, coal boiler to generate the steam that powered the train. They would then go back, get, grab their passenger cars, and continue the trip in Saratoga Springs. So another picture later in the, the uh, diesel years, early 50s, just before the line was uh, torn up in 1957, crossing the uh, Fish Creek. And this picture right here is a picture of one of the uh, early Fitchburg steam locomotives. That large brick building in the background is the armory that's still in Saratoga Springs to this day. If you stand on High Rock Road by the, by the armory, you can kind of line up the pictures. It's kind of neat. You can actually stand right there in the street and almost picture that steam engine parked right in front of you. So now that they were getting people from the city and from Boston and places up to Saratoga, they needed to get them out on the lake. They built a hotel known as the White Sulphur Springs, and they also built this magnific magnificent steamer known as the Lady of the Lake. She was 149 feet long. She had a 32-foot beam. That would be equivalent to almost the width of this room. She was a catamaran steamer, very unique. By that, it means that she had two hulls. There was a hull on one side and a hull on the other with an open gap down the center. That open gap in the center was where the paddle wheel went. If you went up to Lake George and you've seen like the Minnehaha, it has a very large paddle wheel on the stern. This steamer actually had a central paddle wheel built directly in the center by her steam boiler that it turned in between the two uh, catamaran hulls powering her, and she was built by a company known as James Rees and Sons at Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. At that time, she cost $40,000, and she had been uh, financed and built by the Fitchburg Railroad. Now, there's a book up there on the table if you check out on the way out. That's an original uh, book from James Rees and Sons that I had found. It talks about some of their designs of their steamboats. They were very well known. They were one of the first companies to come up with the idea of galvanized hulls in these catamaran boats and steamboats that could be taken apart. 
They built this steamboat in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and actually sent her up here via the railroad. She came up in parts and boxcars, like a large model. They sent 70 workers to the lake, and when they, when they arrived and all the parts got to the lake, they basically slapped her together. Now, boats weren't very, they weren't built for long, for, you know, long periods of time. They would build them, they would get their use out of them, and then probably scrap them. The hull got about 10 years on her before they determined that it wasn't uh, worth rebuilding anymore. There was no large dry docks or any maintenance facilities to uh, accommodate a boat of this size. So this boat was dismantled in the late 1890s. Now, it was rumored to be sunk. That was one of the great Saratoga Spring rumors about the steamboat sunk in Saratoga Lake. And there are a number of articles that talk about the old big white steamboat sunk off Snake Hill in the deep water. And some of the old ice fishermen tales was is that if you went on the early ice, the black ice, in like December, January, you could see down to the bottom and you could see the old remains of the white steamboat. Don't believe that to be true. I did go out and do some side scan sonar and some parts off Snake Hill and we did not find any large pieces of the steamboat. However, in the early 30s, sometime in there, there was an article that came out. It was an April Fool's joke about how uh, the steamboat had been found and how they were going to raise her, and she was once again going to sail Saratoga Lake. Come on. Turn my on. That was a page out of the James Rees and Sons uh, Company. It talks about their iron and steel hull freight and passenger steamers and tugboats. They did very well uh, building these light uh, boats to go up rivers, things like that. These boats were later uh, built of this design and they did very well with their boats uh, down in South America. I did find this one article. Now, very little information about the Lady of the Lake exists. It's very, very poorly documented. And it's amazing that a boat of this size and this stature and said to be the most beautiful boat to have ever sailed Saratoga Lake, that's the only picture of it that exists. I did find it says about this article, it says the big catamaran steamer so familiar to the quarters of Moons and White Sulphur Springs Hotel, which was launched in 1880 by the Saratoga Lake Railway Company, it was cost $40,000, has disappeared from the placid waters of the lake. It was taken apart last winter and hauled in pieces to Troy. In its place, a dapper little craft christened the Ermini, which is owned and will be run by T.C. Luther of the White Sulphur. It will make regular trips from the Fitchburg Railroad dock at the head of the lake to the hotel named. The White Sulphur is already in open and picking up its share of crumbs of patronage, which is all that is accorded at, of the hotels at this moment. It was kind of interesting. It does talk about it being disassembled and being sent to Troy. Basically, they sent her back to Troy the same way she arrived here. They brought the railroad cars up, they cut her up in the chunks, put her in a boxcar, and sent her back to the scrapyard. Unfortunate, but uh, normally things like that were saved. There would be large pieces of brass, bronze, gauges, the ship's wheel, hand-carved wooden eagles, paneling. You look at all these places like the Canfield Casino, look at all the gorgeous paneling, the steamboats were the same thing. They were very ornate on the inside. Everything had gold gilded mirrors, hand carved chairs, things like that. They certainly didn't load that stuff into boxcars. There were a lot of camps and cabins, I bet, that had a lot, just, a lot of gorgeous stuff in them and were probably parts of the steamboat. Now, over the years, those things get sold and passed on. And you never know where they go. And uh, randomly, they show up in antique, shores, antique stores, but they're usually not very well documented. This talks about the uh, steamboats that will connect with the Fitchburg Depot at Lake Ave. Gives the old the schedules from arriving at the Sulphur Springs Hotel in at Saratoga. And it says, says round trip tickets on the train or on the boat, 25 cents. Now it says a steamer and barge to charter for private parties and excursions. It's kind of neat. The uh, summer season was the heyday, very busy, and they were offering at capacity. And this was a uh, interesting license. I found an original license from uh, Fred Decker. He was the engineer. And uh, it talks about the uh, steamer Alice and the steamer Annex, two of the uh, 
great boats of Saratoga Lake. And this is dated 1913. Now that previous said about, uh, Ed said about the steamer and a barge, when they were at capacity and the boat was full, they took a big old barge that they would craft out of whatever they could get, they would hook a cable to it, and tow the passengers down the lake in a barge. Yep, anything to make a buck. So if the boat was full, get on the barge. Now this is one of those steamers that was mentioned earlier. It said when the uh, Lady of the Lake was uh, taken apart that Thomas Luther had bought a boat named the Ermini. This is a picture of her in front of Snake Hill. This would have been probably, if you were standing right down at about Brown's Beach, this would have been probably right off Brown's Beach with Snake Hill in the background. White Sulphur Spring Hotel would have been just off her stern on the right-hand side. This was a picture of the boat being built. Um, most of the lines are pretty comparable, and we think that's the same hull. And that was showing it uh, being built up at the north, north end of the lake, up at the Briggs House. That was uh, bought by Thomas Luther in 1892. And it also burnt the same year. The boat was barely a year old when she caught on fire. And uh, in, in, in burns, she sinks. And she was actually uh, raised and repaired. Now, a gentleman by the name of uh, Thomas Luther. He was a uh, young man. He was running the uh, railroad running the Fitchburg Railroad connection in the north end of the lake in the hotel. The White Sulphur Spring Hotel at this time had been owned by the Fitchburg Railroad. He was managing the boat, the, the steamboat uh, Lady of the Lake, and a boat named the Idlewild. He was running this hotel. He was doing very well at it. He very much enjoyed the hotel industry. So after he ran the hotel for four years, he took his life savings of $5,600, and he bought the hotel from the Fitchburg Railroad. Now, the hotel did very well because it had a uh, telegraph uh, connection with Wayville Station just to the east of it, which still exists today. That's a private home. And uh, folks very much liked staying there. It had its own sulfur spring directly on the property. And sulfur springs were um, very popular for folks with skin ailments, conditions, things like that. The sulfur water was very good for you. So he bought this property. He did uh, very, very well with it. He was leasing steamboats from uh, the leasers at the north end of the uh, lake, running scheduled trips between the hotel and the railroad connection. He actually is doing so well that the leasers of the steamboats decided to discontinue his lease because he was taking too much money away from them. Picture of the north end of the lake, probably uh, somewhere up by Moons in Interlaken. Uh, one of the uh, early steamboats. We think that one might be the Idlewild. Article talks about the uh, Ermini sinking. It says, soon after, it says uh, soon after the little steamer, Romini plying between Moons and White Sulphur Springs dock, Saratoga Lake left her dock at the former place yesterday afternoon. Her machinery broke and stove a hole in the bottom of the boat. Engineer Munson quickly jammed a coat into the leak and stopped the flow of water sufficiently to allow the steamer to regain her dock and land the passengers before she sank in about 30 feet of water. She will be raised and repaired. So these were the typical uh, things that happened to the steamboats back in the day wasn't uncommon to throw a dry rod or a shaft and pop a hole in the bottom and do whatever he had to do. So the new steamboat arrives here at the lake. This is a gorgeous boat, one of the most popular boats. Most of the pictures you see of it here is the uh, Steamboat Alice, probably the most well-known boat on Saratoga Lake. This is a picture of it parked uh, at its dock right in front of Cateross Park in the background. It was built in 1893 in Detroit, Michigan, originally named the Osceola. It was built by a gentleman by the name of Charles Willard. She was exhibited in 1893 at the Chicago World's Fair, winning first prize. Now, I said earlier, Mr. Luther was doing so well with his steamboats that they had discontinued his steamboat lease. But fortunately, his wife's cousin was a boat builder, and he had just built this fine craft. 
So he went out to uh, Chicago to look at it. It was uh, it met his standards. He purchased it, and it was delivered to him at Buffalo, New York. What's that? Sure. There we go. Oops, back one. So it was delivered at uh, Buffalo, New York. He actually sailed it, and him and his own men sailed it from Buffalo down the Erie Canal to uh, Albany. Up at Albany, they came up the Hudson River all the way to Schuylerville. Uh, quite the adventure at that time to sail a wooden uh, steamship through the canals of that period and bring it there. But when she arrived at Schuylerville, they uh, had the railroad come and pick it up. They brought a steam crane. They picked the boat up out of the water, put it on a flat car, and they transported the steamboat all the way back to the uh, Fish Creek at that railroad trestle. At the trestle, they picked her up again, set her back in the lake, and off she went. In his own memoirs, it's kind of funny. He talks about the day it was launched. It says that uh, the guests didn't even know the boat was in the water as she floated like a duck. There were 70 people in the boat when they picked it up with the crane off the railroad car and set it into the lake. And he says it wasn't because of the champagne. That wasn't served until later. Yep, he says everybody was served champagne, including all of the workers. Now, when they brought it back down to the uh, White Sulphur Spring, he was christened the Alice. His own memoir says it took the better part of the day for the uh, guests to convince... Um, his wife to set aside her usual modesty and christen the boat which he named after her, Alice. And that's a picture of it right in front of Cater Ross Park, making a direct trolley connection. Very important for the folks that live in Saratoga Springs. You would hop on that trolley, take it to the amusement park, kids could go out and play, you could enjoy an afternoon boat ride on the lake, and you could take it down to the White Sulphur Spring Hotel. Now this is the last known photo of the Steamboat Alice, 1922. It's part of the George Bolster collection, one of the uh, better pictures. That's the uh, White Sulphur Spring Hotel in the background in her steamboat pier with a little pavilion. Just on the other side of the hotel, there was the Sulphur Spring right there. You can still see that from Route 9P if you drive by it today. It's the ruins of the old Sulphur Spring. But a woman by the name of Edna used to uh, ladle the water out and give it to all the guests to uh, drink. And the advertisements say despite its putrid taste, you should drink it anyway because it's good for you. And if you drink enough of it, it says you'll get used to the bad taste. Now his wife was, uh, Edna's husband was a gentleman by the name of Fred Decker. He was the chief engineer on the Steamboat Alice. That's, that license in the background was his uh, license, and that was Edna's husband. He was also uh, Thomas Luther's right-hand man. It's another picture of the hotel from the backside. The Steamboat Alice would be parked out here in the front, and this is the... Uh, the sulfur spring that was right on the property. I recently just found some parts of the original uh, property and some history. If you go into uh, Mangino's restaurant at the south end of Saratoga Lake and you go down to the bathrooms, there's a picture of the Steamboat Alice there and there's a large metal sign hanging on the wall with a big like finger on it and it says to the Steamboat Landing. It's the original uh, sign from the White Sulphur Spring Hotel sending guests down to the Steamboat Alice. A couple of the old advertisements from the early 1900s. It says the steam yacht Alice, the fastest yacht carrying passengers on any lake in New York State. It says moonlight excursions on Saratoga Lake and fireworks. Round trip tickets reduced to 60 cents, car and boat. Another one for Friday evening excursions. And dancing, very popular thing to get out there on the lake and enjoy this uh, type of festivities on very beautiful steam yacht. Now, ironically, her moonlight cruises did very, very well. And they, as they were kind of running, they were doing a little bit more than uh, moonlight. She was smuggling the moonshine between the railroad connection at the north end of the lake and the hotel. You see, the, moon, the uh, moonshine was coming in from Montreal via the railroad. She would casually swing up there under the cover of darkness, able to do close to 20 miles an hour, which was very fast for a steamboat at that time, pick up her cases of shine, distribute them between Riley's, uh, moons and many others, and uh, did quite a good business with that while it lasted. Okay. And then that was pretty much the demise. 1922, the Steamboat Alice was sold. She went out to Erie, Pennsylvania, and uh, spent the, her final years out there in freight service. Unfortunately, being lost during the uh, 
during the Depression, more than likely for insurance reasons. It says that she was uh, lost in a storm off Erie, Pennsylvania with no loss of life. Ironically, there was nobody on the boat. Now the demise, the steamboats fade out, everybody has their own car, they're building roads, they're building dirt roads around the lake. The, uh, you now have planes. This picture in 1919 is one of the first seaplanes on Saratoga Lake. Things like that were becoming very more popular. You were getting gasoline-powered boats. It was, wasn't uncommon now for people to be able to have a gas-powered boat, an apathy-powered boat, and be able to zip down the lake to get where they needed to go. So when you look at the whole lake, just the history of the lake and the boats on a quick timeline, early 1945, the Coleman was built. Neat things that figure into this, you had the Civil War shortly after that, and the Silver Moon, larger boat, boats are getting bigger, tourism's coming back. The railroad arrives, they build the Lady of the Lake, the largest boat on Saratoga Lake that have ever sailed the lake. White Sulphur Springs Hotel business is booming. Tommy Luther buys the hotel, does very well with it. Lady of the Lake disappears off the lake. The Ermini gets in, comes into the picture. He leases a few other boats, the Annex, the Idlewild. Spanish-American War, that's in there. These hotels do very well after that, promoting uh, that they are malaria-free, no mosquitoes, things like that. So a lot of folks are coming back from that, and uh, you'll see a lot of that in the old advertisements. Steam, Steamer Alice does eventually burn at her dock, but she was rebuilt. Um, we've got World War I, we've got Prohibition, and then the Steamboat Alice being sold. Moon's Lake House burns again. Got the Great Depression. And then pretty much after that, there's no more great steamboats on Saratoga Lake. That was, that was the end of it. And then quickly, where we come back in? The rebirth. It had been almost 100 years since the steamboats were on Saratoga Lake. They just weren't out there. The lake was in really bad shape for many years. You had septic and sewerage and running into the lake. The lake was dirty. It wasn't a popular place. All that changes. Sewer systems come into effect. The lake becomes clean again. It starts becoming a major source for tourism, folks visiting it, very large homes being built on the lake, uh, gorgeous properties, and it's been 100 years and nobody's, there's not a single boat that takes folks out on tours or shows them the history of the lake. And we launched the General Schuyler. Photo of the General Schuyler on the Fish Creek in the background, but she was a 50-foot fantail launch and uh, very similar to the steamboat Alice when you look at her side by side and the other boats that were on the lake. So it was kind of neat to bring that tradition back. Like I said, it was the first boat to uh, return since 1922. If you look at the old pictures of the steamboats off the, moon's, uh, the Moon Lake House dock, they were right off here in the distance, and there's the General Schuyler just coming back in. But we're very proud to keep that 1845 tradition alive, telling the uh, rich history of Saratoga Lake. And we invite you to come out and spend an afternoon on the General Schuyler and relive Saratoga Lake's golden years. So, folks, thanks for joining us. Hope you learned a few things about the boats, and it was a pleasure being here tonight. What, what did they do with the boats in the wintertime when the boat froze? They would haul them up on shore, usually. They would, uh, they would build ramps or runners and haul them up. There is a one article that talks about the Alice going to her winter quarters, sometimes up by the railroad trestle. Quite often they would bring them there and uh, keep them in the channel where the current would be. And you could get coal from the railroad, so the coal would be used to stoke the boilers, and they would often keep the boilers running, basically just banked all uh, winter long. They also hauled them out. There was a, uh, if you leave the channel on the east side by uh, uh, Dorothy's house there where we sail by, there's a pond in the back, and there used to be a fish hatchery, they said and there was a narrow channel, and they said they would haul the steamboats into the channel and then haul them basically out onto a ramp for their dry dock. So they would pretty much just dry dock them for the winter or keep the ice you know, melted around them. Anybody else? Any questions? Can you tell us about tours on Fish Creek? Do we do tours on Fish Creek? Yep, we take our pontoon boat occasionally up Fish Creek and we do the, bring the General Schuyler up Fish Creek as far as the uh, kayak shack and we turn her around up there, but the pontoon boat goes up another four miles up to the, the uh, Bryant's Bridge, and uh, we do some of the fall stuff up there occasionally. But we do sail through the end of October, mostly weekends now for fall foliage. 
we open Mother's Day around there and then we sail all through the summer and then basically right through the fall until just about Halloween. Anybody else? I know the hotel was there, and it, it may have been operated for a restaurant a little bit until. Oh, okay. It was on the site. On the site. I know the hotel came down in 1957. They took the White Sulphur Spring Hotel down in 1957 to make room for Route 9P. 9P basically runs right through where the uh, Sulphur Springs Hotel would have been. It's actually an outboard. It's a 90 horse Honda outboard. Really? Yeah, it's concealed in the back in the fantail, so it's very quiet. We burn about two and a half gallons of fuel. I wanted to put a steam boiler in it, but my wife said I, said I couldn't spend any more money. <laughs> no, no, I, uh, I, I haven't been on that boat in years. My, uh, my uncle did, uh, sold that business some years ago, but uh, I do get up on the boats on Lake George. Uh, here and there a little bit. I have to do a wedding up there um, in a couple of weeks. So it is nice to get up there and get up to the, the Narrows. So what is it like to go on the boat? What do you do? What do you see? We go around, we go basically, we start north on the lake and we come out and we go around the shore, around Moons. We tell people about the hotels, the points of interest. We go past Dorothy's house. Now Dorothy's house is this cute little spot where the Cedar home and she comes out every day and waves to us, and she has a she has a conch shell, and she blows the conch shell every day when we go past, and we salute her with our whistle, and all the captains have their own way of saluting her, so she knows who exactly the captain is, and like I said earlier, they would all toot the whistle their own ways, and you could always tell which steamboat or captain it was, and Dorothy always knows when I'm on the boat because I have my own way of doing it, and uh, she's lived on the lake for over 50 years, and that's a very important part of her day. She calls it her job. And while I always invite her to come out with us, she politely declines because she doesn't want to miss doing her job. Yep, so she has a good time with that. But uh, we go down around Cateross Park and we tell folks about the old amusement park, Cateross Park, the trolley connections, and then we swing out towards the sandbar where folks uh, drop anchor and they anchor out there on the lake and they go swimming. Then we go past the sailing club and we uh, quickly talk about the sailing, the old tradition on Saratoga Lake of folks coming out to uh, enjoy the sailing because of the very uh, prevalent winds out of the south, very popular for sailing. We talk about the regattas and things like that. We go down towards Riley's Cove, we talk a little bit about Riley's Cove. Then we make our way towards Brown Beach, talk about Brown's Beach and the history of that, Stillwater and Malta. And then we swing around Snake Hill and you get some gorgeous views of the rock ledges there that were formed during the glacial periods as Saratoga Lake was formed as a glacial lake. As the glaciers came through, they pushed the rock and soil out of the way leaving the one large mound that's there today known as Snake Hill. When they melted, the lake was left. But uh, the rumors of the rattlesnakes on the hill, the geological formations in the rocks, various things like that. And then as we come north, we follow Route 9P, and uh, you see the uh, St. Isaac Jogues Church that we go past, some of the uh, beautiful homes and mansions that have been built along the lake, and then we eventually wander our way back up to Fish Creek to our marina. Yeah, we're just on the just north of the 9P bridge at the old Saratoga Boatworks Marina. Okay, yeah. We're 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 docked right in there. Uh, yep. What's the past? Tw uh, 20. I keep it about 22. We're rated for 28 and two crew, but I keep it about 22. We do a fireworks cruise every year. We do a jazz cruise. We're always doing different things. We do a dinner, private dinner cruise for up to 10 people, uh, private charters. We do um, basically kind of anything. A lot of birthdays, retirements. It's very popular for the uh, bachelor and bachelorette groups that come to Saratoga. I didn't know this was such a large destination for bachelorettes, <laughs> but let me tell you, it is. Um, is that where the head of the fish 
Yes. Yep, the head of the fish. Yep, we'll do some stuff for the regatta. See you guys. But um, yep, always new events. We're gonna do a, we do a ghost ship at the end of the year for the uh, kids around Halloween, and we're gonna do a pumpkin picker on Saturdays where we uh, go out and do a cruise, and then the kids get to get, pick a pumpkin when they're done. So we always keep it uh, exciting and uh, tell some different things. We talk about Grant's Cottage, Mount McGregor. You can see off in the distance. We talk about the Campfield Casino, the gambling, the various lake houses, all the things that were around Saratoga Lake that make the lake what it is great today in Saratoga Springs. So everything that happens here at the casino. Downtown Saratoga, the lake houses, the gambling, prohibition, the drinking, it was all tied into Saratoga Lake, the steamboats and the railroad. It was all one part of the circle. So it's really great to bring that tradition back and really kind of piece that part of the missing history back for the folks that really never got to see it or enjoy it. And like I said, this, that's a step back in time to kind of relive the golden years. And it's exactly what it would have been like. The boat is all mahogany and uh, oak on the inside, polished brass railings and fittings. and. Uh, about the closest thing you can come. Well, I enjoyed your whole program immensely, but um, having you talk about the steamer Alice was very special to me because I'm old enough to actually know people who are gone now who actually uh, were on the steamer Alice. My husband's grandmother had four children born in the 19 teens, and she said it was a uh, Yes. To take the trolley, she lived on uh, Dam Street, and she would take the trolley down to the Cater Off Park just the way you said it. Yep. And um, a tackle picnic basket and take her four little children um, on the boat it was. to the lake and visit somewhere around uh, Luther's and then come back across. Yep. It is. It's really. It's. It's. It's neat. Thank you very much. And interesting about that. We and we made actually made a really tr tr excellent connection when we did this. We, uh, I was invited to the home of uh, Carol Mackey, who is the granddaughter of Thomas Luther, and she shared with me the photos of the steamboat Alice from her personal collection and many others and ones that I didn't have, and really painted the picture for me and told her, uh, you know, from being a little girl and remembering the steamboats and remembering Edna and Mr. Decker and, and those folks, and. Uh, it was so nice to be part of that and, and tying it all back in. When we christened the General Schuyler, Carol Mackey was actually the one who broke the champagne on the bottle and uh, kind of completed it full circle for me, that steamboat connection with the last steamboat and the steamboat Alice, that Thomas Luther's granddaughter was the one that christened the General Schuyler back to Saratoga Lake. And she, uh, every, she rides every season. She always sits up in the captain's chair right next to me. And uh, she loves being out there. And she says it reminds her exactly of being on the steamboat Alice. We got a brochure and then we have a website. Our website's on there and there's a calendar. And it shows on the calendar, it shows exactly what's on there. And we also have a Facebook and Instagram and we usually post any types of events or special things on there. But you can always call and, and ask and we, uh, we do post a lot of stuff though. And we have, yep, we have stuff coming up and that's all on there, so. What's the website? Uh, adkcruise.com, adkcruise.com. And it's right on the uh, brochure. So please grab some of the brochures on the way out and. Would love to see you on board, either this fall or next year for sure. Thanks, folks.